I did not expect that South Australia was going to be this beautiful. These were some of the glimpses of what I was able to see driving from Adelaide to Uluru and back. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about how best to go and see the Uluru and come back to Adelaide. That's right, the drive from Adelaide to Ayers Rock is about 17 to 18 hours straight, but we've actually taken the scenic so that we can go and hit the hot spots along the way. It took us a grand total of nine days, and this is how it has unfolded. And of course, if you haven't done so by now, make sure you go like, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you can stay updated with some of the most amazing places that I get to visit around the world. And our first destination is Alligator Gorge. What originally attracted me to go check out Alligator Gorge was the this orange and rocky mountainside, but it was way too hot for a climb because it was in January and the temperature was around 40 degrees. So in actual fact, we actually drove our car as deep as possible, giving us the shortest possible hike, which was a 250 meters, which was extremely hard for us to do in a deep, deep, deep heat. But this was some of the view that we were able to get. For us, we actually cheated and we just got to the top and got a lofty view from there. But I think Alligator Gorge would be better explored if you actually do the full walk. Make sure you go like, share and subscribe. From Alligator Gorge, we then quickly moved to Port Augusta and that's where we decided to stay the night. We stayed at one of the campsites. There was a pool, yes. Arriving around the mid to late afternoons, and you'll find that throughout the trip, wherever you get to stay, a lot of these campsites do offer these cooking facilities where you can bring your own food and cook your own meals to your liking, which I thought was very, very convenient throughout. And we wanted to find something interesting to do in Port Augusta. Where we found ourselves at sunset was Matthew Flinders' Red Cliff Lookout. It was one of the most beautiful sunsets I was able to see. Wow, the sun just set behind us. It looks super beautiful. Anyway, and the colors are absolutely amazing. Everything was like this orangey, browny, tingy color, and it was just beautiful looking over the river. If you are in town for Port Augusta, this is definitely one of the highlights that you do not want to miss. All right, so we are literally kilometers away from Rocks Downs. We're gonna get some petrol here and then off to Endamuka. We let's go. So from Port Augusta, instead of going straight to Kuriwapiti, we made a detour out to Roxby Downs and Endamuka. All right, so I didn't think I'd ever be back at this place, but here we are in Endamuka. It is 41.5 degrees. Endamuka is very well known for opal mining. That's why you see all these mounds. These are people digging up sand, dirt to pick up opal. In this town, there's actually a lot of history. A lot of people came to this town looking for opal. And a lot of these houses and properties were very much run down and there's a lot of machinery that's just been neglected and collecting rust. And that oven in itself has become a bit of a sight. Also, when you're in Endemuka, do have a little drive around in some of those mounds. It is definitely an interesting feeling. All those mounds have actually piled up because of the noodling that happens. It is quite a bit of a wild town. So by the afternoon, we actually arrived in Kuvapiti. Welcome to Kuvapiti. Now Kuvapiti is known for underground houses and buildings because it's so hot, all these buildings find themselves under the ground. But we were there only for the afternoon to the evening. And there we stayed at Big Four Caravan Park. And that was a very relaxing stay, of course, with a pool as well. And that was quite refreshing for how hot it was on that day. So the first place that we went to was the spaceship. It seemed really cool, but when I actually really went there, it wasn't actually much to see. Now, after that, we actually went to the Big Wind. It is basically just a big winch. We made it to Big Winch 360. I already got a good feeling about this. The cafe is closed because of COVID, but this place we think is going to have all. Oh. And that was a really, really cool spot to see the entire town. And after that, we actually found that a little ways down the road was actually the Kuba PD sign. Much like they have in Hollywood, they had that sign. We're just walking up to the Kuba PD sign. There's no real trail or anything. We're just finding some dirt patches and just walking up. I think this is by far one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen in my entire life, guys. And there we've taken photos and we just watched the sunset. It was arguably one of the most beautiful sunsets I've ever seen in my entire life. And by the time the sun has completely set. We actually visited the Serbian church. It looked really interesting online. By the time we got there, of course, it was already closed. But what I did do was I just jumped around in the mounds opposite the Serbian church. But definitely next time I would love to see the inside of the Serbian church because it is actually half underground. And then of course the following morning we went from Kruber PD and we made a hasty trip up to Alice Springs. Along the way we stopped over at the South Australia to Northern Territory border 
and that was really interesting. There's a beautiful sign there, so if you get a chance, make sure you take lots and lots of photos and videos there. Here you can see me hopping back and forth from South Australia to Northern Territory. Now the landscape on the way to Alice Springs from the border onwards was actually very, very luscious green. We did not expect Northern Territory to be this green. There was some level of drizzle and it was really, really pleasant to see. And of course, it wasn't long before we found ourselves in Alice Springs. And once again, we stayed at a caravan park. Being at a caravan park, you know what food I'm eating. And so in Alice Springs though, how we spent the night was we actually went to the lookout once again. And this lookout is called Anzac Hill. And what I observed there was that looking into the distance across the mountain, you see rain actually pouring through the skies. And you basically see a column of water that's coming down from the skies, which I thought was just magnificently amazing. And the next morning we stocked up at an Asian grocery store, which I didn't expect to find in Alice Springs. Yes, Alice Springs is a pretty well-developed city in that sense, I guess. And there, we actually found some bubble tea as well, which we were initially dubious about, but the owner was Taiwanese, so how could I say no to that? Now, with that boba in our hands, we actually made our way out of Alice Springs. On our way to Kings Canyon, we actually stopped over at this place called Stanley Chasm. And there, I found a really, really amazing toilet. In front of the toilet were these beautiful paintings of an Aboriginal male and an Aboriginal female and walking out the toilet was this man who happened to be the artist of these amazing paintings. How long did this take to paint? Uh, two weeks. Two weeks? Yeah. Wow. And that is David in the video you're seeing right there. This is one of those things that I really loved about traveling locally here in Australia. There was so much culture and identity in the little details that we found along our journey. This is Australia. And of course the walk up and down, it's not really up or down because it's quite flat was actually a quite pleasant walk. There was a lot to see, and the rock formations and the colors were absolutely phenomenal. Now, Stanley Chasm was just a quick 10, 15 minute walk up. And what you see at Stanley Chasm is literally two chasm. It's two cliffs right up against each other and you're right in the middle between a rock and another rock. Hello, is this the Uber to Kings Canyon? That's it, mate, that's thank, it, come thank on, you so come much. Forward. Thank you so much. So the next destination is something that I really look forward to on this road trip, and that is because they have water. The first place that we went to was Ormiston Gorge. It is a quick 10 minute walk down, and basically you are at the gorge. And yes, these are one of the few gorges that you can actually swim in, which is a massive privilege, because not all gorges are open to the public, because some of them are sacred and have significant indigenous meaning behind them. It was just a perfect little oasis stuck right amidst of all that is wild and amazing and beautiful. There was another gorge along the way, but they were close, so all we got was just a few drone shots, so you're looking at that really quickly there. The next destination that we went to was Red Bank Gorge, which in the photos looked absolutely stunning, so we couldn't give that one a miss. The road into the Red Bank Gorge is actually quite a rough terrain. We do actually have to make a 40 minute hike into it. It's actually not really a hike, it's flat. You just have to walk around all the rocks, and by the time you get there, you will see one of the most beautiful oases unfold ahead of you is basically Stanley Chasm with water. And Stanley Chasm doesn't even begin to fairly represent what Red Bank Gorge is because it is that colossal and grandeur. It is absolutely stunning. When you go there, you can swim around. Yes, it is very scary because the water is quite murky, but that is actually part of the fun. Here you see me jumping in and around. As you can see, I came out all in one piece. I did think that something was gonna come up and eat me up, but it didn't and I'm here all safely, which is the best part. I've never seen anything like it. I couldn't believe the colors that were entering into my eyes. So on your way from Red Bank Gorge to Kings Canyon, you'll be hit with this gravel road, but along the way, you'll be able to see some wild horses. If you want to do anything before your life's end, you must, you must, and I stress, you must visit Kings Canyon. It is one of the most beautiful places you will ever get to visit. What we did was the full rim walk, which takes three hours, and we did it around the sunrise. The climbing itself isn't particularly too hard. At the beginning, yes, the climb up is quite steep, but after that, the next two and a half hours are going to be absolute bliss. You're going to see those domes. I think they're called Devil's Dome, and you're going to go to the Garden of Eden as well, and there are so many places to take wonderful photos and to be able to witness that sun rise above that horizon with all that cutting rocks and cliff, 
is just absolutely fantastic. The walk is called the rim walk. You must, must, must do the rim walk. It is definitely worth your while and it is a wonderful experience. And even on your way down, you will be able to see some amazing sights. And of course, I normally don't like to hike. This is a wonderful exception. Usually hikes are pretty painful and boring on the way up until you get to the full beautiful site. But here you are enjoying the beautiful site all the way throughout. And of course, by the time you get down to the mountain, it's only like nine or 10. You got the whole day ahead of you to continue to explore and enjoy. And of course, after Kings Canyon is a long awaited arrival to Ayers Rock. Now, when you get to Ayers Rock, you don't actually get to Ayers Rock, you're gonna to get to this place called Yalara. Yalara is a town set up in a loop. So you're gonna come off your highway and you're gonna enter into the loop and around the loop are available options for your stay, whether they are hotels or campgrounds. We actually stayed at the campground because all the other places weren't really available and it was a very economic stay for us to enjoy. So the first activity that we did in Uluru was the helicopter ride over the Uluru Rock itself, which was as sensational as the idea of an NSF after a short briefing we were on the helicopter straight away with a super witty super awesome pilot giving us all the guided tour information and we are looking at this magnificent rock from above and it was absolutely phenomenal yes it does cost more to ride the helicopter over as rock during a sunset but this was a fantastic opportunity for us to actually get the full grasp of the actual Uluru itself there were many jokes and many laughters and it was such a fantastic time this place was by far the cheapest per minute of riding the helicopter as well as one of the most entertaining and unforgettable experiences ever. All right guys, we just made it to Uluru. It is one of the most beautiful things ever. After making a safe landing, we actually went over to the Uluru Rock itself where the sunset viewing platform is. And from there, you're able to see Uluru change its color. And that of course was one of the most beautiful things ever. And from there, we actually got transported over to Starlight Dinner. We are actually the last tour group left in the national park itself so that we can enjoy a very authentic gourmet Australian Outback barbecue. And of course, in the next following morning, I was up nice and early to catch the sun rise and and yes, the sun rises really, really early in Uluru. I think I had to get up at 4.30 a.m. to actually get there. We were able to see that change in color, which was extremely magnificent. We then drove actually closer to the Ayers Rock itself to actually go check out the water hole there, which I thought was particularly beautiful. And we actually walked around until we could actually touch the Ayers Rock of it in itself, which was an absolute privilege. All right, so we're at the Uluru Camel Tours. In that afternoon, I actually went on an Uluru Camel Tour where the camel actually goes on a bit of a tracked walk where we can see the Uluru in the background, which I think was unreal. After a quick debrief, we are on the Camelbacks and we're riding for about an hour and a half. I thought it would be really boring. Pascal actually walked alongside of us, telling us lots of interesting stories about camels and we could ask all sorts of questions about camels and Uluru and Ayers Rock. And he was there ready to answer these questions, which I thought was extremely interesting. After the camels, we actually went to Mount Karachuta, which is actually another sort of Ayers Rock kind of thing. It's a bit of a cluster and it's a bit more scattered around but you actually can climb on there so when you go check out Uluru go check out Mount Karachuta I genuinely thought Mount Karachuta had actually more to offer and there was less people and less tourists out there which was fantastic now there will be a lot of flies when you're climbing Mount Karachuta I do recommend you go take yourself a fly net because you're gonna be annoyed to death and on the following morning we actually saw one of the most beautiful sunrises the colors were absolutely amazing and so we made our way over to Sejuna okay, so we just found this there's one, and there's another one. There's two. So in Sejuna, what you want to do is go to check out Penong and check out the pink lake, which didn't look particularly pink, but I'm just going to use some magic and make it look pink for you. Boom, there it is. And that is the famous blue and pink lake that people like to walk and drive over. And nearby there is a blue lake. You must check out the blue lake, but before you get to the blue lake, go check out the sand dunes. And of course, at the end of the sand dunes, there is a beach. From all the walking up and down that you'll do from the sand dunes, you will work up a sweat, and that's where you're going to wash off in the blue lake. Now, the blue lake is extremely blue, because because of its salt content once again. And the salt content actually makes the water a lot denser and you actually float in the water a lot. I found the sand dunes probably one of the most out of this world, most unexpected beauty of Sejuna. Because it looks like a scene out of Dubai. The sand were extremely white and it went for miles and it was just beautiful. And you think this picture is actually from a really, really hot weather. No, it's not. It was a balmy 28 degrees and it was just 
fantastic. And nearby is Point St. Clair Jetty where I went for a swim and there were zebra fishes, which I thought was quite nice. There is a catchment area. I did break the rules and swim outside of that catchment area, but that barrier is actually for you to be protected from sharks, which I think is quite important if you wanna have a safe and a fun holiday. And of course, Cactus Beach is another wonderful site that you wanna visit while you're in Phnom. Driving back through to Sujuna, we actually got some oysters. There you see those three oysters that are really big in Lulu's hands. And in one of those oysters, there's more meat in that than a dozen of the smaller oysters as well. And it is a treat. For those of you who like oysters, I personally am not much of a fan. And after that, we went to Streaky Bay to eat. It was a much busier jetty with other people jumping into that jetty pool that there was, but people were jumping in and I had lots of fun there as well. And on the way back, of course, we enjoyed a beautiful sunset, which we continue to do so at Pinky Point back in Sejuna. And we watched the sunset over jetty, which is known to be South Australia's most beautiful sunsets. After the final night in Sejuna, we made a V-line back to Adelaide, therefore concluding our trip from Adelaide to Ayers Rock, back to Adelaide. Thanks for tuning in, guys. This is how to road trip from Adelaide to Ayers Rock and back. I'll see you next time. Peace out. I just love railway, so I'm making the shot. Let's go!